Welcome to Hospitality. I'm Stefan Zarnecki from Black Tie Tours. With me, as always, is Wesley Jones of Tour Cascadia and local artist Cole Rogers. And we are also joined today at their vineyard by the proprietors of one of the hottest brands in the Willamette Valley. They are uh, marketing experts, actually cut their teeth in the professional world in marketing. But they, uh, they got out of that. They came to this beautiful little farm here at, at the, uh, the base of Shehalem Mountain to, uh, to start a winery. And uh, we have Brian and Laura of Hazel Fern Cellars. Welcome, Fred. Hey, guys. Hi guys. So, um, Brian and Laura, we are stoked to be here that we could actually make this all kind of work out on short notice. And, um, yeah, I'm going to turn my – going to turn a little, <laughs> little bit. This feels weird. Um, so, you started making wine in a basement. In our basement. In Portland. In Portland. In Portland. So a little different than making it here. What's like the the one thing, like the one tool or process or whatever where you're just like, oh man, I'm so glad I'm not in a basement. It's it's gotta be all the tools. <laughs> all so, the tools. Yeah, <laughs> okay, exactly. every tool. Exactly, yeah. So we, we started uh, as you mentioned in our basement in northeast Portland and that, that still actually really informs our style. So it's a very old world style because we learn to make wine in very small batches with our hands. And uh, we still do a lot of that today. It's just now we have much bigger equipment and tools <laughs> and more space. And I, I know for your back, it helps that we don't have to carry barrels up and down the stairs to the basement anymore. No. Which, oh, which was brutal. So it was like a real basement, not like a daylight basement. No. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Real, you know, I mean, you know, Portland's got those beautiful, like, full house size basements like sure. uh, yeah great places stairs, to make wine. On the yeah. way down. how many yeah. cases did you do your first year uh, very first year i mean not not like we're doing now yeah. but we by the end in our basement more than i will we will legally admit to hey <laughs> yeah that's right that's that's impressive either way a lot we, we, st we started in 2006 so more than a barrel, barrel. Mm -hmm. we started with a little quarter like barrel said, and then, uh, and the then several barrels yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, hopefully there's no all OLCs watching our episodes. Exactly. I don't, yeah, that's right. Personal I mean, yeah, consumption. We, we drink personal. Oh, personal. obviously. Oh. For friends. For personal. friends. For friends. Yeah. Personal. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. Um, and then you moved out here, kept working, mm -hmm. and uh, but planted the vineyard. Now, did you guys plant this vineyard? Mm -hmm. We did, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. so we, we uh, you know, you guys are looking at uh, what used to be a horse property. So the winery is in a, in a real horse barn. It was built for horses as you see it. And uh, when we moved here, this was like a big horse pasture with all this fencing. And we're actually sitting where they had the, what are they called? The horse corrals? Paddocks. The paddocks, yeah, mm. the corrals. Like I like to think it's like an old western. But uh, th we, this is all like fenced in. <laughs> it's and cool. it's more badass. Yeah, yes, I know. I'm, I'm with we're you. sitting I'm in the like corrals. I heard there was actually a really called. good shootout here that happened yeah. one time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you guys should make up some. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, uh, yeah. I, I saw bullet holes when I went yeah. through. It's a tough, okay. it's a tough spot. Root and tootin' town of Newburgh. Yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> Hazelfern Hill. Actually, no one would Hazelfern be surprised Hill. in Newburgh. <laughs> There's somebody, yeah. yeah. But there, I do think that the uh, stable and the, the way you've kept it um, enough to, to recognize it as still a stable is really, it's really cool. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's an yeah, amazing like, touch. Um, I think a lot of people would have just tore out the entire interior and just made it beautiful. But I think you've done, like, you've kept it sort of as it was, but then uh, made it, you know, place you feel like yeah. you taste wine and yeah. was yeah. that was that the intention from the beginning when you walked through the first time to yes. maintain the structure and set it up or was this a little bit of a disagreement <laughs> there's some looks happening no, this was <laughs> I, I was like done. he was like yes that was the total intent i'm like uh, it kind of happened by a happy accident we didn't really have a plan mm. we knew sort of aesthetics what we wanted everything to look like and feel like but then things just kind of happened as we needed them to happen mm. so yeah. We're entrepreneurship. Yeah. It's yeah. just like you, yeah. you roll with the punches, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. You're like, this year we need a corral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, it, it, when we walked into the space, like we were living in Portland, we walked into the space and, you know, we, we knew, you guys, I mean, you're sitting here looking at some very historic vineyards here in Oregon. You know, this is Medici Vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, we knew this was a great spot to plant the grapes. So like, mm, we sure. knew it was good from that standpoint, like check. And we knew the soil was great, but it was when we walked into the barn that we were like, dude, this could be so sick. Yeah. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. just something different, like a different experience, and yeah. that's what we fell in love with. So, yeah. How many acres of vines did you plant on this property? Uh, we have about three here. Okay. So our total property here is five acres, okay. and uh, we've now maxed it out between the barn. Our house is back behind the barn, and then the vines. Mm. 
And so we work with, uh, we currently have contracts at 10 different vineyards across the valley and do a whole bunch of single vineyard stuff. Yeah. And then uh, have now this vineyard online. So, and, and some unique varieties out of here too. This is uh, Pinot Noir, Gamay Noir, and Trousseau Noir is what mm. we planted when we moved in. Wow. So, mm-hmm. now, yeah, doing some different stuff. I've got to be a little honest with you guys for a second. I know it's yeah. on camera. There is some frustration because you guys are so hot you're so cool that I'll call you up in like fall and be like, hey, can we bring in some people for tasting? And you're like, our wine is all gone. Yeah. We can't do tastings. And it's that's that that sucks for me because I want to show you guys off. Because like yeah. when I said you guys were hot, hot, hot. That's what I mean. They, you guys sell all your wine. Up and coming. That's what's been right. happening, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've been, we've been super fortunate. Up, that's and, amazing. And thank you to all of you guys for bringing the folks out. Yeah. And yeah. We, we appreciate that. We'll and, take all the credit. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yes, we do. We uh, so far every year we've we've sold out by fall, and it's it's oh, been amazing. What a dream. And uh, we're we're super blessed. We're blessed okay. by the location. We're just right next to the Allison. That really really helps. We get a lot of literal foot traffic from the Allison. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't know. We're, we've been we pinch ourselves. We've been very fortunate mm-hmm. coming into the industry. As of mm-hmm. as of now, what's your total case production? Three thousand. Okay. cases, yeah. That's yeah. a lot of wine to move in mm-hmm. one year. So uh-huh. that's a big accomplishment. Thank you. Yeah. But what's new? I mean, you poured this rosé for us. Yeah. yeah. And that's this is new. what's new. This right? is delicious. Yeah, so this the, is like the the, the most an- anticipated wine we've ever released. <laughs> Because there was a people pandemic, are just clamoring for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And so people, I mean, it's rosé is a great wine, though. Yeah. People don't want to admit. People don't like to admit they love rosé. Rose. I love rosé. Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. loves rosé. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's hot today, and so that's perfect it's perfect for, it. for a hot day. But yeah. we we literally just uh, kind of quietly released this this weekend, <laughs> and nor- normally we release it in like April, mm-hmm. and May. this year with the pandemic, everything was just on pause, so we just never really got around to it, mm. and so we uh, we released it quietly on summer solstice which was saturday and so we we like to pretend we did that on purpose but really it's because we just never got around to doing it did you it. get angry emails from wine club members yeah. just like it's oh, it's a fucking rose yeah. 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 yeah basically mm-hmm. yeah he didn't i did okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. i feel oh, the, the sun's out give me rose mm-hmm. yeah I, well and Actually, you know it's been like kind of a cool wet yeah may and june yeah. like so so i just mean it hasn't even really been summer yeah so i'm glad that we have it for this week because it's like like you said earlier mm-hmm. like today it's summer today it's, it, i mean it was 90s today it was hot yeah. Yeah. i yeah. love it's that brian weather. is telling you this story but the real story behind the rosé oh <laughs> See, this is <laughs> the, the real story <laughs> is that there was a pandemic and therefore we actually hand bottle all of our wines and always have we're we're kind oh. of on that cusp we're about to move away from that but um we've gr- we came up from a small production so that's kind of everything we've always known mm. anyway uh normally we bottle all of our wines in the winter up until about march the last wine usually to get bottled is the rosé and then a pandemic happened and we couldn't get any help and you usually have help okay that makes sense so we yep. used our children <laughs> To help us bottle the wine. <laughs> and yes. they are not like adult children. They're like children <laughs> children. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Which means you don't have to pay Every, yeah. every, every <laughs> bottle was literally hand-touched by little hands. Oh, my God. Uh, we didn't use this as an advertisement. Uh, oh. yeah. so, child labor. Child it's a labor. Thing. Yeah. yeah. My you guys are drinking rosé handmade and hand-bottled by the hands of six-year-olds. Yes. So, yeah. But, I mean, you could just spin <laughs> it a different way. You know, Fa- it's fa- it was a family affair. Yeah. Every every bottle was virgin. Yeah, touched by virgin hands. Yes. Please don't. Technically Unicorn dust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The levels look great. Yeah. They were they were filled well. Yeah. 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 Right. They didn't actually fill the bottles. They they like to uh, climb up the pallets of wine as the stacks go up, and they put the bottles back into the boxes. Oh. Little yeah, hands. They clean them and put yeah. them in there. Well, I think that's actually. I mean, I worked for Cody right for. A, quite a mm-hmm. while mm-hmm. and Cody's tells me amazing like fond memories he has of growing up in the winery with his dad yeah and how much you know learning was done at that time so I mean there's yeah. it is funny but it's also like <clears throat> I think it's a very valuable valuable gift for them there's not many kids that can grow up in a winery yeah with a winemaker for parents you yeah. Know? yeah I mean yeah now, and now Co- Cody parents. has two young kids now yep. growing up in the and winery Tyrus is the, you know he's the same, yeah. same thing he's always there I just think it's such an awesome an awesome family uh, business. Yeah, totally, mm. yeah. totally. So yeah. there's there is a really neat part of that. Yeah, I, mean, I think it it instills in them hard work. You get to actually see the product and the thing that your parents work hard to make. Mm. Yeah, it's like this full circle thing. Now, yeah. did you 
bribe them with like money, food, screen time? What was the was there a, was there a carrot, or are they just so angelic that they just wanted to serve you? you well, know, or a combination. Yes. Well, can I, yeah, can, it's can kind I of share about, that story. Yeah. So they, uh, it, it used to be things like can't dessert, ice cream, you know, things like that, right? The easy stuff. That's changed though. So during the pandemic, we we have a bunch of chickens. We have more chickens now because of this situation. We were doing the wine drive through here at the winery, and so the girls figured out that they could sell chicken eggs, and oh. they crushed it. So there was like a shortage on eggs in general, and then they so they started selling eggs, and I mean they they dude they were like literally what were like per weekend. I mean they were making like hundred and eighty five dollars a weekend, oh my like for like six years old. So anyway, we can no longer so bribe them with ice cream. Anymore. They don't care about that. They they're they're like full on like entrepreneurs. You know, oh, yeah. Adeline Ad- 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 just says like, oh, can we? You know, can we sell that? You know, can we do this? Oh and I'm just constant everything. Do you everything. need these shoes, Dad? Can I sell them on yeah. eBay? Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> don't sell my shoes, child. We released an animal. That's what I did. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> it's going into their bank accounts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah they well, have it's to amazing. buy supplies. We're also been homeschooling, so. Um, I'm teaching them business 101, calculating yeah. wow. margins. Excellent. Uh, they, they went out. versus retail. Some important stuff. Yeah, yeah. they bought they bought yeah. more chicks to increase the production. Yeah, that is They're, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still paying off a lot of this school so debt cool. for exactly that. So if you can help them avoid yeah. Yeah, exactly. having Before, to go to business right. school and not actually learning anything you can't learn from your mom or Google. Right. Yeah, be yeah. helpful. Yeah, I that's right. Exactly. Um, I agree. While we're still talking roundabout about the rosé, how did you make the rosé? What's well, um, what's your, your so r- rosé is, uh, we make it purposefully for rosé. You guys are drinking the summer rosé. We actually make two rosés. We okay. do a summer rosé and a winter rosé. And uh, the difference is summer rosé is all stainless steel, super bright, refreshing for a hot day like today. Uh, the winter rosé, we take that same rosé base and we put it in, to neutral French oak barrels and we leave it there until just before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Uh, just adds more savory tone to the wine, just a little bit bigger. Yeah. Perfect for the holidays. But uh this being summer, uh, what we're going for is just kind of that salty minerality. I, you know, for me, I, I'm not a huge fan of Pinot Noir Rosé when it goes a little bit more like watermelon, Jolly Rancher, like that type of thing, which yeah. which happens a lot. Yeah. And uh, so we've, we've really been playing with some things. Like this year we did some more stem inclusion, which is kind of weird for Rosé. Wow. I'm trying to get a little bit more savoriness to the summer just to tone down the candied fruit quality. So I'm going for more like white peach you know, more like salty, mineral, acid-driven, just yeah. re- refreshing for a hot day, less like heavy candy. I think you nailed it. It's very, very refreshing. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's good. Um, now, one of the reasons we came up here today was to talk Chardonnay. Because, our favorite subject. Because yeah. you guys are on our on our list. I, all of us, top five Chardonnay. Well, Cole, I don't think it has been as familiar. He's well, admittedly, little, admittedly like, though, I'm not a huge Chardonnay guy. I mean, yeah. I like Chardonnay, and I will drink a really good Chardonnay. I wouldn't remember every Chardonnay I drank, you know. I, I yeah. like a few, and I'm happy we, to yeah. to uh, to increase my knowledge of it. But I picked out you some really good ones. You need to talk to Ryan Fusselman, that guy. He's been drinking just mountains of I'll, Chardonnay. I'll talk to Ryan any day. Yeah. Yeah. That, that guy was a, I love Ryan Fusselman. Animal. Yeah. That guy's. <laughs> I'll talk to Ryan Fusselman about anything. Let's go <laughs> talk about cars. Anyway. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> so you obviously make Chardonnay. So two questions: What kind of Chardonnay? Do you, do you like to drink Chardonnay? And then yeah. uh, what kind of Chardonnay do you like to make? Are, yeah. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's not the same thing. Um, it's So we, we like drinking Chardonnay from all over. We're, we're obsessed with Chardonnay. It's our favorite wine to make, certainly. It's also our favorite to drink. So, uh, we, I mean, literally all over the world, we, we love Chardonnay. We're obsessed with it. Um, I guess I'll start also by saying that as of the 2019 vintage, we actually make more Chardonnay than Pinot Noir here in the winery. No kidding. Uh, which which is kind of unique, and uh, in, in the 18 vintage, which we have some going around here, uh, we did five different Chardonnays, so three single vineyards, a Willamette Valley blend, and then our Prime Cut, which is our reserve series, and uh, we're, we're absolutely obsessed with it. I, I love how it ripens on the vine. I love the flavor development. Uh, when you pick, aff- affects the flavor of the wine, and I, I also love just the fermentation of Chardonnay. It's uh, you know, it's we 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 bring it in, we press all the uh, all the grapes, and we let all that grape juice turn like muddy black, mm-hmm. and so we're oxidizing it up front, and then it goes, uh, it kind of settles out, and then goes into the barrels, and we just let it ferment uh, just naturally in every single barrel, and so now the end product, would you say it leans more like Chablis style, California style, somewhere in the middle, white Burgundy, like what? what White Burgundy, but not Chablis style. So okay. a little. I mean, all of our wines are barrel fermented, barrel aged. Okay. Uh, we 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 tend to all of our vineyards actually are in 
the like northern northern part of the Willamette Valley we have one that's out on the eastern edge of the valley but a little bit warmer and so the reason I'm saying that is I really think like Eola Amity Hills for example like that's going to be our I mean I hate comparing Oregon to to Burgundy but but if you had to like that that you know acid driven uh, you know those are those are more going to be Chablis style down there and up here in the Chehala Mountains and, and even further north it's just much warmer, and so we get a little bit bigger fruit profile, yeah. a little bit bigger yeah. wines, and yeah. so yeah. That, that works really well for our the style that we're going for. And so, uh, you know, I, w- I would say white burgundy is, you know, it's that That's style, but it's not it's not Chablis. It's not yeah. that style. So now what's mm-hmm. the difference between a $45 bottle of Chardonnay and a $150 bottle of Chardonnay? Marketing. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Yeah. And also the price. And the price uh, is different. Okay. Uh, there, it's not uh, – so you're not going to go into, say, oh, the winemaking or – Somebody's going to pitch you something besides marketing. This is a very slippery slope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, the mar- it's the marketing. Yeah. 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 Look, I you can be really happy with some cheaper Chardonnay. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. still at a winery right now, and I'm selling anything from a $37 bottle of Chardonnay to a $120 bottle of Chardonnay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 100% of it is my presentation and the connection I make with the guests. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I was to pour them side by side, people are going to get mad at me for saying this. But if I did it five times in a row, maybe two of the times you're going to fall in love and take home the most expensive. Mm-hmm. But so much of it is. It's marketing. It's that relationship. It's the romance of the setting. And I could sell the shit out of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I think, mean, I, I think, I, oh, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, I think ahead. also, I mean, in my experience, price is often determined by by the amount of inventory that, that a certain wine has. So yeah. if you're limited in a, in a certain Chardonnay your your club members really like, yep. I mean, yeah. if people will buy it for 150 then sell it for 150 and especially if there's yeah. only a case or if there's only a barrel, yep. mm-hmm. I think that determines a lot of, I think that justifies a higher price too. Yeah. Sure, marketing helps sell those bottles, but I mean, when you're thinking of why sell it for 150 is it usually, uh, does it usually include right inventory levels? Yeah, so I mean, I guess, and I'm, I'm including I'm including scarcity as sure. part of marketing. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Like that's okay. that's okay. kind of part okay. of that yeah. strategy yeah. and just the brand, the producer. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, great producers can pull a high sure. amount for their wine, and you know, because it also it's part of someone's collection and it adds value to their lives in other yeah. ways. Yeah. It's part of that story that you're talking about. And I, so I hate to cut you off, Brian. Yeah. We're gonna take a little break here, yeah. and when we come back, we are gonna talk more Chardonnay. We'll be right back. Awesome. Welcome back to Hospitality. Uh, we are here again with Brian and Laura of Hazel Fern Cellars. Thank you guys for inviting us up for uh, uh, wine drinking and, and yeah. chatting. Thanks so for appreciate that. Uh, we are really focusing on Chardonnay today, and that is what is in the glass right now. Brian, can you tell us what this specific Chardonnay is? Yeah, so we, w- I, I've opened uh, our three single vineyards from the 2018 vintage. First of all, I'll start by saying I think that the 18 vintage here in the Willamette Valley is incredible. Mm-hmm. And, wow, uh, and you can go to many, many producers and get amazing Chardonnay. Uh, vin- vintages with Chardonnay is not something that's talked about a lot right now. That's a very Pinot Noir thing, but uh, we don't talk a lot about with Chardonnay. 18 was incredible, so definitely seek those out. Uh, you guys have the first of three single vineyards in your glass. This is a Chardonnay that we call Little Hells from here in the Chehala Mountains. Uh, the vineyard is actually located just kind of up behind us. So we're just, you know, north of Newburgh here. Uh, if you were to go up Rex Hill, so everyone knows like the Rex Hill Winery. Uh, if you go up 99, at the top of that vineyard, down the backside, drops into a little canyon called Little Hells Canyon. Uh, a little creek runs through there, Cedar Creek, uh, and literally old uh, like moonshiner and rum runner shacks like still on that Ooh. creek. So we, we like to think of it as kind of a... A rough and tough place, much like Hazel Fern in the Corral. Oh, exactly. So it fits the brand really well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is called Little Hells from uh, an amazing site that's down in that canyon on a south facing slope. Okay. And uh, of these three, this will definitely be the more. Again, I hate to use the term, but like Burgundian. So it's it's definitely very, you know, has the almonds, the flintiness, uh, those little white flowers. Uh, it's a site that we really, really love. Uh, and uh, yeah, a- after that, we have two other single vineyards from uh, Stormy Morning Vineyard and then Rock Block, which is out on the East Valley. Those will be kind of more the what I call the modern Oregon style, much more fruit driven. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all three made in the same exact way. They were all made in that, that black Chardonnay method. But uh what I love about Chardonnay is I think it's even more sight expressive than Pinot Noir. And we wow. always talk about how sight expressive that is. And, and Pinot is so sight expressive. I, I think that uh, Chardonnay is maybe even more than, mm. than Pinot. And we're, 
we're just obsessed with it, and I think you'll see how different these three wines are. Yeah. We, we set out in the beginning to make a Chardonnay lineup. Our goal was to one day have an entire menu when someone come in, came in to show the different kind of the site expressiveness of Chardonnay and yeah. in 2008 we accomplished that so we yeah. have five wow. yeah. that's one of the things Thumbnail. about Patricia Green that I love so much is you can go do these different sites different blocks yeah. individuals and you can taste them side by side and have that educational experience yeah absolutely that you don't yeah. get with a lot of even some vineyard designates that are on huge vineyard sites and you're doing these little blends when you get these little pockets and you can set them side by side. It's really special. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, what? I think one thing that's really cool too is we. Th- this is this actually was not on purpose but all three of these vineyards come from the very same soil type so it's all basically laurel wood so wind, windblown soil and here in Oregon we have the three major soil types windblown volcanic and marine sedimentary and it just happens to be that all of our chardonnays come from windblown soil and so same soil type different locations of course and just wildly different chardonnays and really quickly 100% neutral oak do we do a little bit of new french oak yeah what's, we, the, what's the dirt here we, we do uh, about 20% new Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and a lot of that now we've kind of moved to the big 500 liter punchins for okay. our new oak. So trying to kind of back off of the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the he, you know the heavy flavor profile. Yeah. That's the more integration, more rounding effect to it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Chardonnay is the topic, and what I want to talk about is our top five yeah. uh, Chardonnay producers in the Lima Valley. We have our. You guys are obviously in the top five. So we had. I had. We had to pick top five. Besides you, of course, because you are top five top 100 what do you want to say <laughs> and uh so let's see who's gonna go first i'll cole. go first cole you're gonna go first yeah so my first one is britain uh i am partial because i worked for the britons but <clears throat> i think robert makes a really nice i actually i actually think it's kind of similar to this one um in the sense that it's he does i think a little bit of his in stainless but it's he has just a touch of oak not an overwhelming amount yeah. of buttery yep um, so there's a balance of kind of minerality and buttery with, with Roberts that's really nice. It was the first time I tasted a Chardonnay that I thought, wow, the oak is really good in that. Yeah. Not just no oak, only stainless steel. That's kind of how I thought of Chardonnay for a while. It's like, I don't want anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So um, I like Evening Land Chardonnay a lot. Um, I like the Rocco Chardonnay. Yep. Um, I think Rollin makes a really nice Chard. Mm-hmm. Bubbles as well. It's a different day. Um <laughs> Purple Hands, Cody, of course, makes delicious shard. And I was there when he made his first uh, shard, so I got to see him kind of put that together. And, um, and plant it, too, right around, right at the... I didn't plant it with him. That was when He planted it, it when right I was there. Right around when, mm-hmm. yeah, you were When he there, first planted it in his new vineyard. That's Latch Key, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll say Winderly, even though R- Robert's a part of the process there. Different style. It's totally different style. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I just think they do a, an awesome job. Gotcha, great. Uh, Wesley, you're up. I'm going to Evening Land. I think it was the first Chardonnay that I really fell in love with at the beginning of my Chardonnay journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like really kind of stopped me, and I was like, "Oh, like this. This isn't anything I've ever been exposed to. I was so used yeah. to sort of the super high oak uh, Chardonnays from California. Yeah. And just yeah. Ins- I was one of those people that would walk into a tasting room and say anything but Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, so Evening Line has a, a lot. Yeah. really. I, I don't like those people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of take it as a challenge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like, convert but everyone. Because they, don't, yeah, they, don't, yeah. they haven't had Oregon Have you had a Chardonnay? Yeah. Have yeah. you had a white right. Burgundy? Exactly. Like, let's talk about what Chardonnay actually is. Let's talk cool climate versus warm climate. Um, then Bethel Heights. I think Bethel Heights is mm-hmm. currently what I'm drinking most. Yeah. As far as my Chardonnay. Yeah. Um, Domain Roy. I love Jared Chardonnay. That's why I went. Well, here it is. I'm working at Domain Roy right now. Hadn't said that on camera yet. Um, but that's why I joined yeah, working yeah. with them because I, I loved his Chardonnay. Yeah. Um, Anderson family. Yep. I still have some 11s yeah. from them. And they're, as far as, this is another conversation. We don't talk about vintage a whole lot, but we also don't talk about ageability of Chardonnay. It's so ageable. Forever. Right. Mm. Um, yes. And then last is going to be Antique Terra. I think Maggie's doing yeah, some pretty nice. special Strong stuff play. with Chardonnay. Strong play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, guys has, you guys have mentioned some good ones. Uh, Bethel Heights was a contender on my list for yeah, sure, yeah, as was Domain Wah. I, like, uh, I remember tasting last year at Bethel Heights and going, oh, shit, this is really good. Like, yeah. And they were really distinct, the two. I think I just tasted two of theirs, and they were they were both really good. Uh, my list, uh, Walter Scott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love those guys. I mean, they just are standard bearers 
I think, in yep. the Valley mm -hmm. um, and are, are just killing it down there with sight and style and um, great people. Totally agree. Uh, Evening Land's been mentioned, double zero. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, expensive, but they're good. They're yeah. really, really they're good. good. I like those wines. The Pinot's good, too. The yeah. Pinot's good, yep. too. Um, but, yeah, every Chardonnay I've had, I've been like, ah, that's really yeah. fucking good. So can't begrudge them the price. Um, yep. E I E I O. Yeah. Uh, Jay makes a variety of Chardonnays, um, some single vineyards. Uh, oh, shoot. Saffron? No, Yates Conwell Chardonnay in particular. I really love of his. He does some nice stuff. Yeah. Um, and then Lingle Franca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, do, they're kicking some ass down there um, and really dedicating yeah. a lot of time to their Chardonnay program. Talk about two vineyard sites next to each other that are just gorgeous. Yeah. You have Evening Land, Seven Springs, and then yeah. you've got their new... Yeah. You know, property right there yeah. now Pretty what about special. you guys what would what would you add to the list who would you say maybe um have, have inspired you in your short yeah, journey absolutely uh, i mean i think you guys have named several of them yeah. I, I think walter scott deserves a shout out for really uh being inspiring being us. yeah inspiring us for sure mm -hmm. super focused on chardonnay you know they're you know, I, th I think you can probably count on your hands how many people have, are doing multiple Chardonnays and, and really have that study in Chardonnay. And uh, and certainly Walter Scott is, is someone that inspires us a lot. Um, Lingua Franca, we love. Uh, Double Zero, I, I love because, I, I mean, I love that they're doing that same, you know, the, the black style of Chardonnay method that we do. So, yeah, I mean, always have looked to those wines. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some uh, some new ones out as well uh, sure. that, we, that we haven't mentioned yet. But uh, Morgan Long, I think so. Oh, Seth yeah. Morgan Long makes I'm some great Chardonnays. Had his, man, may have just had a Pinot of his. I think. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll get the industry party anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, Seth Morgan Long. Yeah. I think we have to mention another winery that does uh, multiple Chardonnays. Big Table Farm yeah. is usually kind of oh, in that, in that discussion as well. Yes. And. <laughs> and then I'm going to go some urban, urban guys as well. So I'm going to add Vincent. I, I really mm -hmm. like his Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Division, the folks at Division okay. uh, down in Portland mm -hmm. uh, do do a, one of the first Chardonnays that we fell in love with back when we were making wine in our basement in Portland oh, was uh, nice. was Division. They, they've affected a lot of kind of the, the treatment of oak that we do. So someone that's inspired us as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Laura? My, some, my list is a compilation of all of you um you know hands down for me it's um walter scott lingua franca um you know i would give a shout out to bergstrom yeah, yeah that was um, a contender you know that's definitely inspired some of our direction um big table farm yeah definitely mm. heard that one um yeah. yeah i think that uh i really like what um grant Grant Coulter is making for like Fanur yep. yeah. um, and That's his cool. style. Do they have a Chardonnay in the Hundred Sons I label? Don't know. I don't think that I've tasted it. Just a anything. Fanur, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't I seen one in the Hundred Sons. Um, which is why I said Fanur, but yeah. I love really all of Grant, Grant's and Renee's wines, but I would put it in my list. Is that fun? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, something like that. That's a good list. Yeah. yeah. It's good. I, th I think yeah. it's, it's amazing, like, even just in this conversation. I'm realizing, I think, that <clears throat> what the thing that made me really fall in love with Pinot was the terroir-driven, nerdy, like, uh, the, the change that you get from vineyard site to vineyard site and how much more it has to do with, like, geology and, yeah. and site than it does have to do with winemaking or anything. I just, for some reason, that idea of tasting the history of the earth was this amazing thing for me that I love history. I love thinking yeah. about the ground that was here millions of years ago. Yep. So thinking of Chardonnay in that way and how you're saying it's so site specific, yep. it ages well, it changes the whole idea for Chardon of Chardonnay for me, honestly. It's amazing. Yeah. Some of my favorite Chardonnays are ones that have been aging for 15 years. Wow. I, mm. think, that, I think that that's something for me that no one really, mm. I just, I don't think we have the libraries yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's I your think, library? I think they're are coming. You guys stashing wine away for not just for you to drink but for yeah. customers down the road or we so uh-huh yeah, this has come yeah, up yeah, a few yeah. times this week and can we be on the email list <laughs> yeah, right. so we have started a library um we're excited about it cool. we're doing a much better job of it there were some growing pains yeah so that affected I mean, the 
library. Our, our first couple of vintages. The, the problem is, is that, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier, like we tend to run out of wine by the fall. And so we have usually heat holds. Like, you know, people, we have a lot of guests that come from like Texas, for example, sure. and they'll come. And uh, I don't know if I should admit that we're really bad at this, but we're bad at like keeping track of all of those orders throughout the summer. And so we get to the fall <laughs> and it's like time to ship all the heat holds. And we never had a library for like er- early on. And so we've, we've gotten much better at it. But uh and, and purposely, like, we want to age these Chardonnays. But, like, for example, like, 2015, that was our first vintage of Chardonnay. I have one bottle of that that I had to buy back oh, from a retailer wow. in Portland. Like, literally, I walked in, and it was on their shelf, and I was like, I will buy that because we have none in our cell. Holy shit. No kidding. And so, so, and like, so I'd love to open it, but I'm like, uh, No, no, man. I, I was like, when do we pitch. open the one so bottle? So back to yeah. that's going for $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to we're gonna drink that or one. 15000 So who wants to buy it for now? No, it's got to pay for at least like a trip to Cabo or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're gonna sell that one. That's yeah. that's a big. But that's I mean, people. That's something that I don't think people understand how hard it is to sell wine. And then in, the, in the, when you do have, like for instance, what you're talking about, where you're you're trying to balance orders that have already been sold, and then you 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 know maybe you have in mind we're gonna keep like se- seven or eight cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then you have a packed tasting room, and it's like okay, that wine's hot. Let's mm-hmm. just sell a case. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so hard, especially in like your position where you're managing your inventory, you're doing mm-hmm. all these hats, wearing all these hats. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's really easy to not have a library, especially in yeah. your first couple of years. Yeah. I don't think many yeah. many wineries do. Yeah. yeah. Thanks and we, for recognizing that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I was I've never the been in your position. Was but me. I've, yeah. Well, no, it's, <laughs> I've been the, I've been in that position <laughs> with with managing a tasting room where I kind of thought I had in mind how much we had left. But, right. But stuff goes really yeah. quick, and yeah. maybe I'm not like looking at w- order port or whatever, you know, POS you're using, and yeah. checking inventory throughout the day. Yeah. yeah. Then pretty soon yeah. it's like, oh my god, we have six bottles of. Yeah, you check OWS, and yeah. you actually didn't have any. Exactly. Yeah, or the exactly. wine's not on site. Right. You think you have more at the cellar, but yeah, exactly. But yeah. it's. It happens it, a lot. And it's it's happening right now on our, our very first uh, wine from the property right here. So we, we literally picked all the grapes. So Pinot, this is not Chardonnay, but Pinot, Gamay, Trousseau. We blended, we like co-fermented and blended one mm-hmm. wine called Noir. Okay. And uh, that was our very first release in the 18 vintage. And it, it completely pre-sold. So it was, was sold out on Futures. And, you know, we, we make wine to share. Like it was never supposed to be this weird, like allocated thing. And so... Yeah. This is ha- literally happening. People come here like last weekend and they're like, oh, hey, you know, I was talking to so-and-so and, you know, do you have like one bottle of Noir? And, and I'm like, yeah, like we got, we could do one bottle out of our collection, you know, and I keep we running down to our cellar now. and now we have like less than a case of our very first wine. Oh, this is yeah. pretty, problem with oh. But it's just like, liked. does he really like being liked? Is this no, like, actually, I think it's actually, it's usually always me. <laughs> Um, that it's like, oh, I think we have like a bottle of that, and you know, but now I'm like militant. Nope, it's gone. I know, but uh, so but Brian I, I am like, has taken I'm like, on that oh, role now. good cop, You're bad cop. And in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, we have really less nice. than a case. They're and then like we, nice. yeah, we talk, and then I'm like, okay, maybe I could do like one bottle, you know. Oh. But I keep doing that like every weekend, and that case is just getting smaller and smaller. Right. And shrinking down. And I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, the door if you want to be, if you want to be a billionaire, Brian, you're gonna have to be more of an asshole in your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not good at just be cold. No. Yeah. He's ruthless. really going to say no to me, though. He's well, like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Repetition <laughs> just is the thought of learning. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Well, we got to take a little break. We will be back in just a moment with what's brutal and what's beautiful, and of course, story time with Cole. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Haas Brutality. Now is the time uh, on the show where we discuss what's been brutal and what's been beautiful. And uh, I will start today with something that I uh, it kind of hurts my soul and is kind of brutal. So it's brutal for a couple of reasons. The IPNC salmon take instead of the salmon bake. Ugh. Now, part one of this being brutal, it's just a reminder that IPNC is not happening. Right. Like, ugh, gosh, the summer. That yeah. whole weekend is just like shot. No old fashioned festival in Newburgh. Right. Yeah, I'm still right. having my party, but. Social distancing. It's all going to be all good. And there will be tacos. I'll be hugging everybody. There will be tacos. <laughs> yeah, you will. I'm sure I'm my parents would appreciate <laughs> I that. No, I, I'm my father. Completely sarcastic, guys. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, so that's, that's part one, just reminding me of the things that we've lost through COVID. That's brutal. And part two, I'm just imagining this salmon take. People are driving up to Stoller. 
and they're getting handed a package with cold salmon and accoutrement and whatever and I think maybe some wine or whatever and it just sounds stupid I'm sorry I just think it sounds stupid like yeah I I, I understand oh, that people are man. trying and uh, you guys have done drive throughs and everything and I think people probably loved it and everything but yeah. that was a little bit more of like a road show going to yeah. Lake Oswego Lake yeah, yeah, we did Lake Oswego. Yeah, yeah. that's cool yeah. like yeah I don't know I I'm just not feeling the salmon take it just feels we did pizza yeah, totally you had different. pizza. That would, that would be way better. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong, and they're gonna have fireworks and or, or fire dancers, and um, Bill Stoller's gonna run around in body paint or something cool. I, I don't know, but I like, think the the salmon bake's only fun because of the wine. Right, the salmon bake is shit about epic food. wines. It's it's decent food. I mean, it's cool the way they cook it too. So being there is right. really neat. It's yes, so but you're missing the right. entire it's cool the part people. about it. It's a party. It's the feeling of yeah. the breeze. Right. If I want and smoked salmon, I'm definitely not buying it from that <laughs> salmon bake. Like, there's way better smoked salmon out there. The way they cook it is cool because you're there and you're around it, and they're doing it this Native American style. And the wine's fucking good. Like. There's amazing wines there. Yeah, yeah. guys That's are just like, hey, look what I brought. Yeah, yeah. You're like, whoa, yeah. gimme. And so yeah, uh, I completely agree. Who cares? Like it's. I know. I just, I just, I'm just not feeling the same oh. intake. I they gotta like do it's something. A reach. Like we're they trying to maintain some normalcy, and this just wasn't the way to do it. Mm-hmm. I know. Again, I would rather do a virtual. They salmon bake. Down to be wrong. Virtual salmon bake would better than a. Down to be wrong, like but I don't. Salmon take. Virtual salmon bake. Yeah. At least you get the visual of the people cooking it and calling on Zoom. Well, Whatever. Right. People are doing that at music festivals now, but they're not doing drive through like Coachella because it's like that. who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. We need to drive through and There's see a, your I, favorite artist. That's we, exactly we, what they're we doing. Gotta, with I, so we, we got to give a shout out to the folks at IPNC, though, for trying. And sure. They, I, they, I, they, I totally because, agree. I, totally I mean, agree. to stay like solvent and relevant. Sure. And everyone's just yeah. trying right now. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to give I'm going to give them a shout out for being creative and yeah. trying trying to do something different to you know keep keep, keep the IPNC organization going I wish they would have tried harder <laughs> sorry <laughs> I think it's a dumb idea I understand that yes everybody's trying and doing different things thank yeah. you for being a voice of reason yeah yeah, yeah. And, and fuck it I don't if we, I ha- if we err on the negative it's only because part of our service is to be crit- critical of I know and it was and that was so, that was my gut reaction to it I sure. think you know but anyway. but, so, I, I, but you're right Brian and the truth is how do you do a salmon? How do you do a IPNC when, when there's COVID? <clears throat> so they had to make a decision, but I just well with the it. bill stole the body paint and fire dancers. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are sure. doing that, and it's going to be kick ass. And I think maybe we just drew circles like the you know like the kid ones you see where like at the <laughs> oh yes. like the parks in New yeah. York Six feet you know they the have parks. the circles. Yeah. And they could do that actually at Stoller, like across the big grass out by the tire. They swing. have so much space, and they wouldn't they mind have paint a bottle of their lawn. Yeah. drone. That'd be that. Yeah. Now, that would be sick. Yeah. Sure. That would be sweet. I can see it. Okay. If you need, if see you what I'm help, talking? We figured this you. out in five minutes. Yeah. Something better than the salmon take. So, anyway, sorry. You could bring your pod, sorry. and each pod could sit in their square. You could bring your dogs. I we should mention. Your, your, we should your mention. Your germ pod. IPNC yeah, is exactly. very important to us. This is why we're passionate about it. Yeah. It's not that we don't right. care yeah. or that we're People come just trying to rag. It. Yeah. We've I been talking I mean, about it. You know, we we've tried to just be fair in the way we have talked about things. So, I think we we are happy that they're still doing something. Yeah. But we wish yeah. that we could be around our people more rather than driving by. Yeah. And yeah. Waving. yeah. That's yeah. All it's all saying. COVID's fault. And, and that's, yeah, we got to win That's why, like, exactly. I hope people support it because this this then you, sets no, up I, maybe I the, the summer after, so that yes. way everyone can get back together and, yeah. and do and the research. Right there might be a charity so or something thing connected week. to it. I thought I, maybe I read that. I'm if sure. It, if there is, then great, because I don't think IPNC is, like, a charitable event. I, I think it's self-sustaining, I kind of. Like a, I mean, it's a non-profit. Yeah, right? yeah but, I mean, for itself. Okay, so that's brutal. Something beautiful. Alex on a winery? Mm-hmm. Their tasting room lead, I'm not sure tasting room managers, I don't think he's ta- tasting room manager, I think. Uh, Charles, if you haven't met, you guys all know Charles. Yeah. That guy is a hospitality ninja, and I knew this already, yeah. and I always respected Charles. But one of my drivers uh, had has been up to Alex on a couple times since COVID, and the way that Charles is um, approaching the... Um, the check-in process yep. and everything from everything that was communicated to me by my driver is that he's being so warm mm. that there's a lot of warmth and like 
what are you comfortable with and it's and it, he's he's managing to still make it very welcoming mm-hmm. and like uh like yeah this kind of this kind of sucks or whatever but you know we're here to m- make sure that you have a great time right that is in contrast to some other places that i personally experienced and heard about that you you drive up or you you walk up to the door and it's tension yeah. people yeah. are stressed out you can yeah. tell they're trying to follow the protocols and they're and 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 the whole thing with between the masks and the check-in and the pre-pourings and everything is like uptight and their people are just uncomfortable uh, and the guests just can feel that yeah and so a huge shout out is something beautiful happening charles charles you're doing a great job you should you should do like a webinar on how to do tasting room stuff during the time of covid yeah. so bravo to I mean, awesome. charles you should charles. do it anyway charles you're a awesome. idol of mine i mean charles was one of the guys that when i started in the the driving business with you stefan i would go to alexander and i'd watch charles the way he handled tables the way he made relationships Smooth. he is one of those guys that you can literally mimic everything he does and you will come out a better host and a better person right there isn't anything charles has done in my experience that's been i think he's a great subpar listener. right it's part of what makes him so great like he and i can he he pauses before responding yeah. to the guests i noticed that a lot it's just a and that's something maybe he does naturally or maybe someone taught him at some point but yeah he can he's yeah yeah he's the best. Well, he's, he's i mean he's, an inten- he's intentional about what he does i think i had a similar experience with charles when i first started with cody at purple hands talking to him about <clears throat> the profession of you know running a tasting room managing a winery and he's done it a long time and i think not many people take that job as seriously as say you know a accountant would take their job because you have a lot of people that have high turnover and yeah and so somebody like charles he's an amazing he's a really rare person in the industry because yeah. he's he truly loves what he does and he also is like constantly trying to get better at it and i think i mean it shows obviously i noticed it yeah, immediately when i met him and we all i think when we go to the alexana feel like you could i could send a guest to alexana and 100 percent know that like they're going to be taken care of yep yeah it's yep. awesome. Yeah. Um, and was it beautiful or brutal? It's beautiful. Beautiful. We Go can ahead. count. We can count it both. But I think it's beautiful. There was an article that came out this week about <clears throat> essentially the bullshit of expert tasters. So all of these high end parties that are these tasting events that happen where wines get rated by one particular person that apparently has this amazing palate. Well, when you're tasting wines over and over and over, we all know that you're, you have palate fatigue. And so what they did was they, they did sort of a controlled study figuring out if one person rated a wine, say, at an 86, how likely were they to come back to that same wine and rate it as a 90 or a 94, which are sort of the three median scores that often are given. And it was basically 90% of these people were unable to distinguish between an 86 to a 94. So they figured out basically, and one of these award-winning tasters even admitted that they just get lucky and that these these sort of scores are essentially given on a random basis because they can't say that's definitely a 94 if they can't even say it's a 94 when they go back and try it two minutes later. Yeah. So the summary of this article was basically that, you know, it's w- wine tasting it can't be left up to this one expert who apparently has a better palate and better, you know, taste than all of us. Wine is not a, you know, uh, objective thing where you can look at the data and say, okay, this one's clearly better than the other. It's, it's subjective. Yeah. And we've all known this. Everybody in the industry all knows this. Yep. Uh, I'm sure Wesley has some, is, some feelings on it. I'm sure both of you do. So yeah. this is when they got in the guardian this week. Guardian. All right. Yeah. We're, sh- well, link that and yeah. share it and absolutely yeah. good story to read but very informative it, i think it speaks on what we're trying to talk about which is that this is this is more than just about you know what one person says is in the glass yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. all you have yeah. to I mean, get i have you. that conversation all the time in the tasting room yeah. and i can do this quickly so we can move on but there's i tell folks especially if it's if they're new to it there's right. two kinds of wine there's wine you like and there's wine you don't like mm-hmm. right let's have a conversation about what you enjoy Let's break down why you enjoy certain things more than others. And let's get to know your palate, right? The, the person that's rating these wines, 
may not have a similar palette to you. Yeah, that's right. And until you follow a Parker or someone for 10 plus years and you try all the wines they do and just happen to have similar likes and interests just because they're scoring, it doesn't mean that that's going to necessarily reflect towards you. Find a reviewer you like. Right. I had a lady in the tasting yeah. room that leaned over to her husband because he was all high and mighty. He's like, ah, oh, you, you have a 94, man. And she goes, honey, what have I told you? Don't be a score whore. <laughs> that's awesome. That's my. That's the thing. I took Scores it away. are great right. for sales, though. Right. Yeah. 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 But makes they're... makes my job easy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, we've got about seven or so minutes left, and it is uh, my favorite segment of the podcast, and that is story time with Cole. So, uh, wow. All right. Cole, take it away. <clears throat> well, luckily I, luckily I went on a date this week, so I had a story to tell. <laughs> um, Let's do it. And luckily, it wasn't perfect, so the story's even better. <laughs> This last week, I went out with a girl. I was, I was telling a, on the story last week that I've been trying to kind of like stay away from dating just because, a, it's kind of weird right now with COVID. It's hard to like. I'm not just gonna, or I prefer not to just have somebody over to my house or go to their the house for the first eyes. time. <laughs> right. And uh, we uh, we actually had a first meetup of a first date here oh in the White House. Oh no! At like an online okay. dating meet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have story time with you afterward. Yeah. That's a, so that's this was an online. Deal. This is an online deal. I'm leaving work, and this pretty girl, um, she works at Intel, so I'm like, all right, like she's got her shit together. <laughs> I'll try it. I'll, I'll meet her up. So we go get a beer, and or excuse me, we got a coffee. So we're sitting there drinking coffee, and I'm not digging it. But I, but we, we, we were talking. It was great. It was, like, fun. But I wasn't, like, waiting to leave. I just, this is good I was not to in, some. Yeah, yeah. I was not interested, That's like, romantically. But I had to leave. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Immediately. I wanted to leave, but I was like, and the conversation was was decent enough, and she was a, she was an enjoyable person, but I was certainly not interested in her romantically. So I'm like, oh, like you know, I'm super tired. Like I keep yawning or whatever. And, That's the go-to. But I'm like, it's signaling I'm gonna leave pretty soon, and then and then she's she's like, oh, yeah, no, I, you worked all day. Like you came straight here from work. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I better get going. So I go out to my car, and she's like, parked not far from me, but I'm like, well, I walk you to your car, said goodbye to her, walked back to my car, and I'm like, ah, I, w- I really wanted to get a, a pint at this uh, this little like tasting room thing, <laughs> and or this brewery, <laughs> excuse me. So I'm like, God, I shouldn't, but I'm just gonna get beer. It's, it was beautiful. I was like on this lake. I'm like. All right, so I wait like three minutes because I'm like, she's probably gone yet. Yeah. Oh, go no. in. Oh, you no. guys know this what guy, happens. This guy. Oh, no. I go in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting next to another girl talking to her, drinking this beer. <laughs> Two minutes later, or three or four minutes later, and I, and I look up and she's walking down this like pathway along the lake, <laughs> totally locks eyes with me. And I just gave her like a what's up, and she just kept walking. Didn't say a single thing. <laughs> oh, I was petrified. I felt so bad. You should. <laughs> but she was really nice. Just not interested. So yeah, that was my oh. awkward day of the week. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was not really actually. It was horrible. <laughs> no. It's funny now for all of us. Mm-hmm. At yeah, the time, I was thinking it's going to be funny at some point, but it's not funny right now. Classical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. On that note, thank you for joining us on Hospitality. We uh, would love to thank our guests today, Laura and Brian yes. of Hazel for Thank you so much. Yeah. It was yeah. really Thanks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, appreciate you guys. It's been wonderful. Thank you for sharing your Chardonnay and your rosé. Once again, I'm Stefan Zernecki of Black Tie Tours, Wesley Jones, Tour Cascadia, and local artist Cole Rogers. We should get some of your art on. We should just like have, I'm, I'm or just wear a, a shirt that's maybe printed in your art. We need to do something yeah. to fund all or your hat. miserable dates. Or my mug. Yeah.